Hello, dear listeners. I sincerely hope that you and your dearest are well during these trying times. This year, I've been painting portraits which thematically build upon my previous year's works. The previous year's works consisted predominantly of constructed and curated spaces which incorporated symbolic and representational objects that were tethered to and grounded within personal experiences. Thematically, these curated spaces aimed to embody memory, family, and hereditary matriarchal knowledges. The intentionality was the creation of specific environments relevant to the individual. I like to describe these as internal landscapes, or perhaps externalised internal spaces. These three-dimensional, curated spaces embodied experience beyond the object itself. They stood as distilled and crystallised forms of liminal and inarticulable events, places and locations within an internal space. Memories, or in essence of those things which are ephemeral or abstract or subconscious, but which hold significance. My interest emerges from a desire to explore what it is that creates this thing we name as the human. In order to explore this, I aimed to represent an internality made external through a collection and curation of symbolic objects, manifestations of elements which shape, create and construct internalised psyche. However, our internal landscapes hold and are shaped by community, including the lineage that created you. Personally, the ephemeral, elusive and vaporous strands that weave the tapestry of my being include a weft of matriarchal knowledges which some may name witchery and a weave of defiant and transgressive nonconformists. My great-grandmother embodied both punk and feminist before those words were birthed. Though this current work may seem different to that which has come before, as many may have just witnessed the 3D structures and baskets of cakes. And not seen the lineage that is transgression, feminism, witchcraft and nonconformity. Those strands are embedded within all of the work I have made which spans these past three years. For this final year, I decided to challenge myself and after deeply analysing my artistic intentions, made the decision to embed all of the thematic elements that have underscored my previous work, but to do this in a less obtrusive and increasingly opaque way. Therefore, curated spaces have been constructed and captured within the act of creating portraits. My work for the last two years involved creating intricate spaces using crafting, collection and collation, and this year these elements can be seen within the backgrounds of the sitters. Therefore, within the current work, The intricate spaces still have emerged, but I have adopted a more painterly approach. My themes explore witches and witchcraft, yet these interests have emerged multidirectionally and are infused with a healthy dose of nonconformist and rebellious feminist thoughts. Although this is intentionally far from overt within the pieces, For me, this links with the historical constructions of witchery, as within past times, behaviours and thinking that are evident in the majority of 21st century individuals, particularly feminists, would be named as witchcraft. The contemporary individual, Western, transported back in time, would be categorised as a witch. My interests are in the rituals, the philosophy, the memories and the personal artefacts of the individual witch. My plans for my work have shifted throughout the year. My original idea was to create a large scale series of portraits of feminists and witches. However, Time constraints made me aware that my initial desires to create such a huge series of portraits was of a far too ambitious scale. 
though I still hope to undertake this project at some point in the future. For me, witchcraft is not just an abstract interest, it is a personal connection. As previously stated, I am someone who heralds from a family of witches. Based upon this notion of personal connections, my ideas therefore change towards the more focused approach of creating a set of portraits of family members. The more specific focus, therefore, within the portrait work I am currently engaged with creating includes themes of familial identity, exploration of witchcraft, and the inheritance of matriarchal knowledges. I am interested in the oft-silent understanding that flows across the procession of time, yet seeps into the being and shapes and creates one's ontological way of being. This body of work foregrounds the witch by focusing upon intimate portraiture of family members who embody the category of witch. However, the intention was not to create characterised misnomers inherent across popular culture, those awful mockeries which appropriate and nullify the power of the transgressive and which are based upon the commodified notions, but rather the focus is upon the exploration of the witch as a complex embodied and human state of being. This is achieved through disrupting the notion of the witch itself by portraying the witch as simply an individual contemporary female within the portraits. The plan for the work was to specifically create a set of three portraits, a triptych. This is done as a means of echoing the Triskelion, or Triple Goddess, the Maiden, the Mother and the Crone. And so, initially, I had decided to depict my younger sister, mother and grandmother. However, I was unable to prepare my grandmother's portrait due to her ill health earlier in the year and the current pandemic restrictions placed upon us. Thus, my plans needed some further alteration. Therefore, one of the portraits will now be a self-portrait, shifting the roles into that of the pre-maiden, pre-mother and pre-crone. While this has unexpectedly shifted the emphasis of the portraits, I feel that this disruption adds a further layer of nuance to the final series and has supported my aims to avoid oversimplification and characterising of the notions and the categories of the witch. This triptych therefore represents the liminal states between the maiden, the mother and crone. These are currently works in progress, with the aims to finish them anon. Therefore, within this presentation, the photographs that I have been using as references whilst creating these portraits are used in place of the final paintings. The aim of the portraits is, as with all portraits, to create a representation of the individual. And whilst I have drawn upon conventions within psychological portraiture, such as direct eye contact, to emphasise the power and independence of the subject throughout, there exists secondary coding within the works. For the portraits, the sitters are in constructed environments, spaces within the home that were curated for the portrait itself. My sitters selected personal artefacts of significance for a formal portrait sitting. Extensive thought and time was taken in constructing these environments and in the curating of the background, or rather, in the environment of the sitter. This offers a symbolic window into elements or facets of the individual's character and personal identity, therefore building upon my previous works which involved internal landscapes made within the physical art space. The inspiration for the involvement of curated spaces was drawn from classical paintings, known as symbolic portraits, by considering how objects and items arranged throughout the background were utilised in order to create hidden meaning within the work, most frequently as a means to denote the power and prestige of the typically male sitter. Within my paintings, these coded meanings are veiled rather than overt. The intention is not for them to be explicit to the viewer. There shall be no codex or diagram, as that would detract from the significance of the personal artefacts. The use of codexes creates a forced interaction, where viewers are searching the image to fill a checklist rather than seeing the entire scene. Whilst each painting 
contains objects and artefacts that are intentionally placed and hold symbolic, metaphoric and personal meanings. The intention is not for this to be explained, but rather the aim is for my paintings to be displayed as simply portraits. The option to explore the image is therefore for the individual viewer, rather than as an enforced mechanical interaction. Instead, the intention is that the portraits become a nuanced, multi-layered representation that can be unpicked if so desired. A superficial engagement may affirm simply a pretty painting, though deeper meanings will be found by those more willing to explore some of the possibly peculiar or intriguing layers and elements within the framing. When it comes to the methods of display for paintings, there seems to be limited options. Suspended from a ceiling, placed upon an easel, sewn into a patchwork, or a cabinet panel? Sigh. As my work is a triptych, a set of three created to be displayed together, as is the traditional approach. This would frequently involve them being hinged together and used as altar pieces. Whilst I do not intend to attach the paintings to one another, as while the sitters are interconnected, they are independent and strong individuals. However, it is essential that the interconnectedness is prioritised within the displaying of this set of portraits. Therefore, these paintings will be displayed sequentially, with the positionality of the sitters creating a composition in which they face each other. in order to complement and contrast. The construction of this arrangement is, in itself, a deeply symbolic and multi-layered gesture. The composition, superficially, follows the sequence of maiden, mother and crone, with my younger sister taking the viewer's left and my mother on the viewer's right. However, this is a subversion within the convention of the artistic principle of the dexter and the sinister as the more culturally and socially powerful is traditionally placed Dexter. Thus placing the child in this position is a further subversion, yet it echoes the philosophy which flows across my lineage and throughout my family traditions. As I have mentioned frequently, the concept of curated spaces is oft central within my practice. Therefore, the ideal method of displaying these paintings would be within the heavily designed environment of a curated space. Ideally, this would be within the traditional setting for portraits, a rather splendid manner. More specifically, an entire house that has been precisely created for a slightly disconcerting art experience that ultimately explored the psychological landscape of the witch. The portraits would be framed in ornate gold frames and hung upon a floral hand-drawn wallpaper that contains insects scattered within the flora. The portraits would further be displayed within either a portrait gallery room or a longer corridor, so that as you approached them, you felt the presence of the sitters and their eyes followed you, enforcing their quiet yet forceful presence. Unfortunately, I did not have a spare manner, so the internet will have to do.